On this channel, we've covered a lot of modded content, from CurseForge being hacked to the question if Overwolf is actually a bad thing. But what I haven't touched on is the modding community itself. In simple terms, it's both a mess and the best thing in existence, with more than thousands of enthusiasts making so many amazing mods like IC2, Create, and so many more, and pouring their heart and soul into the creations. However, the lack of consistency in the way those hobbyists code their mods has led to malware being a big problem twice and with the ever-growing feud between forge fabric and now quilt more and more people are arguing about their preferred platform with even the argument between modernth versus curseforge finding a new spark the community itself seems more divided and united than ever before but what if this could be prevented from the start what if let's say mojang releases an api or a mod loader of its own with streamlined code, a robust feature set, and above all, a wider user base. Would it be better? Well, my friends, let's actually take a look, as this will be my first real opinion piece on the problem with mod of Minecraft. In order to fix a problem, we first have to diagnose what the issues are. And that's why I asked you in my YouTube community tab and my Patreons on Patreon slash SignusMC for your input. And out of all those comments, came three big things. No official real API or method of making mods, a divided community set on fighting amongst themselves about their preferred mod loader and malware. Let's first tackle the last one by stating an important fact. Malware is always a risk when downloading something off the internet. We rely on CurseForge and Modern to check it for us, but in order for them to actually find an issue, it needs to be actually a known issue, but would having a single API slash mod loader with clear instructions fix this issue? Well, yes and no. In cases like Fracturizer, it was actually the distribution of mods that was hit, and it had nothing to do with the way it was coded. It was simply an attack on CurseForge systems via a malicious jar, rather than finding an exploit, it modded jars. However, in the case of Bleeding Pipe, where mostly inexperienced developers used a class that was widely known in the Java world for being very exploitable, a centralized knowledge base with safeguards in place would likely have prevented this and saved a lot of people a lot of headaches. As for an official API, this would of course be amazing and has been proven possible with the use of data backs. See, these little miracles can do some really cool stuff like adding custom blocks and entities. However, it's nowhere near as capable as a robust mod loader like Neoforge or Fabric, as these actually inject some code like schedulers, commands and events that mod actually used to do their magic. So let's say Mojang released an integrated API. There could be three big scenarios. The first one is that it's useless and buggy, causing a lot of people to just not use it at all, preferring much larger and well-established mod loaders. The second is that it's usable and gets used. However, it's limited to smaller changes, making it so that mods that add something to Minecraft, akin to data packs, are actually more efficient and prominent, while overhaul mods like Create need the third-party solutions. Or the third scenario, it's good, usable, and allows for grand mods to actually work on it, allowing all the bigger mods to migrate over and use the official API with streamlined code bases, making conflicting mods a thing of the past. Regardless of what happens, releasing an API could also leave the door open for mods not being limited to what version of Minecraft you're playing. See, Sponge already does this to a degree, where its plugins are not coded for a specific Minecraft version, but for a specific version of Mixin, making it so that both the sponge jar for 1.7, 1.12, and 1.16 can still use the exact same plugins as it's coded for API, in this case being API 8, which is included in all the versions instead of the version of Minecraft itself. If Mojang can actually pull this off, it would not only save a lot of headaches for players juggling between versions, but also the developers not needing to support every imaginable version. Sadly, this is nothing more than a utopian pipe dream as one, I don't trust Mojang with something as complex as this, 
to be actually pulled off in a manner that wouldn't explode my computer. And two, it's far too late. Mod loaders like Forge and Fabric have had years to develop and are just light years ahead of terms of sophistication. This is the same with the server side of things. The official Minecraft software is so bare bones and it has been for years. So the community made it more advanced. And if Mojang wanted to catch up now, nothing short of just merging with one of the big players like Paper wouldn't save its own server from demise but uh we already saw what happens when mojang gets control of a server software and um let's not do that again shall we and the third most brought up issue is the infighting would a single api made by mojang fix this honestly no sadly people have an inherent need to post about how good their chosen product is xbox vs playstation fans vs dc shoes Coca-Cola vs Pepsi, and so many more examples. In the case of modded Minecraft, it's Fabric vs Forge, or in some cases, Moderant vs CurseForge, with both sides of the arguments unwilling to admit the flaws of their own choice while pointing them out in the others, I doubt this would actually change anything. All it would do is add another spark to the internal debate. This is kind of what happened with Quilt. With its creation, a lot of people just descended on it, saying it's either the best thing ever happened, or it's the worst mod loader out there. And personally, this is what I have an issue with. Luckily, my community is filled with awesome people willing to accept other viewpoints, but on the hellscape that is Twitter, it's just a race for whoever gets the most trending tweet of the day. And again, I don't think Mojang is capable of anything this complex without sacrificing a lot of resources that could have been used to add something to the game more casual players would enjoy. However, with that being said, there are games that already do this. A notable mention is Terraria, who has its own mod loader called T Mod Loader, which is made and maintained by the developers themselves. With support for a lot of features and little impact into the game itself, it's a really awesome tool. Aside from that, you have Vintage Story. I promise that video is coming out very soon, I swear. With their own API, their own website to download mods from, and its ability to just download mods from the server itself, making it a seamless and just awesome experience. The issue isn't that it can't be done. The issue is that it has to be done correctly. Eco Global Survival is a great example of how to do mod loading bad. It has its own mod loader built into the server. Similarly to Vintage Story, you download your mod straight from the server itself. However, it absolutely tanks server performance as it sends the full file over the network. It also doesn't help that its API isn't as robust as some others, making the changes the mods can do kind of limited. And of course, there's an issue with not being open source. Because if the EULA rewarding of 2023 and the cease and desist letters sent to the GTM team has taught us anything, it's that Mojang is getting more and more controlling about its IP. So if they brought out their own API, I could see them putting into their EULA that mods have to be EULA compliant. And honestly, I would rather eat dirt than not having Flans mod anymore. Of course, this is all just my opinion. If you disagree with it, awesome. I would love to hear yours in the comments below. But for now, I was Lunar. You were very awesome. And I'll see you in the next one. I would like to thank my fellow patrons on the Patreon for their monetary support. And of course, thank you to my lovely boulders, Yo Jens, Rebecca, Sneesonics, and Willox for supporting me on the boulder tier. And who could forget the lovely giants that are my mountain patrons. Comet Speed, Hans, Akiso, Milhouse, and especially Farron for their support in these last few months. If you would like to support me and feed my cats, have early access to videos and read full interviews with developers and many other prominent names in Minecraft, feel free to join the Patreon right now on patreon.com slash Thanks again, lads.